Psalms 118, 24. You should have read the time that says, please say this is in the sanctuary. So if you got a Big Mac in your purse, if you got candy in your pocket, if you got lollipops, please don't eat it in the sanctuary because we'll have to pick up after you after church. So if you must have a snack between praise, step out in the foyer or go down to the fellowship hall. Thank you for your cooperation. Good morning, St. James members and friends. Dr. James J. Bolton and Evangelist Manami Bolton welcome you to the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. And now, here are your morning announcements. The WMU Ministry of St. James Missionary Baptist Church presents their fourth Sunday mission program, Sunday, March 24th, during morning worship. The theme is Empowering Women for Mission, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. And the guest speaker for this event is Minister Don Miller. And we're asking our entire church membership to support this ministry with a contribution of $25. God bless. The Black Chamber of Commerce of the Permian Basin presents an After Our Business Networking Mixer, March 21st from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. And the location for this event is La Margarita, located at 1301 South Grant Avenue in Odessa. There will be a christening of babies on Sunday, March 24th after morning worship. For additional information, contact the church office. SJMBC Health Ministry invites you back to the Fellowship Hall every third Sunday to get your blood pressure checked. This is brought to you by the SJMBC Health Ministry. We care about your health. The Eight Pearls of Perfection. Miss Princess Jabberwocky. Formal gala and dinner, 7.30 p.m. And the location is the MCM Grande Fondome. And the attire for this event is formal and semi-formal. And the cost is $40. And this event is sponsored by the ladies of the Odessa Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. The nursery is in need of volunteer personnel each Sunday from 1015 until the end of morning worship. For additional information, please contact Sister Tasha or James Walker. Good morning, St. James family. We are embarking on a new clothing mission. We are envisioning an opportunity that will provide clothing to the SJMBC family that are in need. If you would like to be a blessing to this mission, we will be accepting donations of new and or clean, gently used clothing. If you would like to volunteer, please contact the church for more information at 432-580-3306. More details coming soon. We thank you in advance. St. Matthew Baptist Church will celebrate their 64th church anniversary Sunday, March 17th at 3 p.m. And our own Dr. James J. Bolton Next Generation Choir will be the afternoon guest and this is from Pastor Brandon Marshall. Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Midland, Texas invites you to a church revival March 25th through 27th and the guest speaker is Pastor Curtis Zinnenhoff and the theme is it's time to spring forth and cross over. You would like to be a blessing to your pastor and first lady. We now have a designated line item on the tithing envelope. All announcements should be in the office by the end of workday Thursday. Bible study every Wednesday. Dr. Bolton is our teacher, 645. These have been your church announcements. I'd like to say good morning, St. James Church family. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. Psalm 118 and 24 said, This is the day that the Lord is made. And what shall we all do, all of us? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, because God has been good to all of us. And we have so much to be thankful for this morning. I'm going to be reading from uh, 1 Peter the third chapter, uh, starting at the uh, 13th verse. If you can stand, please, for the reading of God's word, let us stand, please. I will be coming from the New King James Version uh, of the scripture. And it reads thus, And who is he 
will harm you if you become followers of what is good. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you, you are e of evil doers. Those who revile you good con conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For well, it's better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Christ suffered in our for us. For Christ also suffered once for sins and the just for the unjust. That is, he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient and once the uh, divine long-suffering waited in the days, Noah, while the ark was having been prepared in which a few, that is, eight uh, souls were saved through the water. And there are also an, uh, another type which now saves us baptism not the removal of the fifth of the flesh but the answers of good conscience towards God throughout the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God angels and our authorities and powers having been made subject to him Thus end in the reading of God's word. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the, uh, the readers of God's word. Thank you, Brother Thomas. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. And that we can rejoice and be glad in this day. You made this day, you made us today, Heavenly Father, because we didn't make ourselves. We thank you, Heavenly Father, to be able to come to the house of worship today, Heavenly Father, to give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor, because it all belongs to you, Heavenly Father. We lift your name up, Heavenly Father. That every man who knows and believes your word and who you sent, your son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you love us so much that when you sent him into this world, that all may be saved. That's why you say, let us whoever will come today and believe in his word and confess who he is today, Heavenly Father. We just thank you, Heavenly Father. We get praise not with just our lips. We pray from our hearts. We just thank you for all your goodness and mercy that you bless us today, Heavenly Father. We thank you for blessing each and every one who comes to this house today, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Holy Spirit, you will fill this house with your presence today, Heavenly Father. That your spirit, that we should receive power today, Heavenly Father, to worship you and not be ashamed to lift our hands up to you today, Heavenly Father. Glorify you today, Heavenly Father. That's what we come into this house to do today, Heavenly Father, to worship you, not nobody else. You are the one we come to worship today, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so good to us that we've been, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves, Heavenly Father. We thank you for being our everything. 
And this, you are everything today, our Father. You're the air we breathe. Every breath we take is because of you. Everything we do today, Heavenly Father, is because of you. If not for you, we couldn't do nothing today, Heavenly Father. And Father, we thank you for all those who are weak. We pray in the Heavenly Father that they will lift up their, their eyes from which all they come from today. Those all in bereavement today, Heavenly Father. Those all who have been sick today, Heavenly Father. Help them today, Heavenly Father. We know you're a way maker today, Lord. And we know you're a miracle worker today, Heavenly Father. You, you mix a way out of no way when it seems impossible. But you are God of the possible because there's nothing impossible for you to do, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for being who you are again today, Heavenly Father. And we go forward, we pray for your word today, Heavenly Father. May it go forth today, Heavenly Father. Your word is not going forth void today, Heavenly Father. But your word is going to come back to, if it, if it one, to hear your word today, Heavenly Father. Even the angels rejoicing for those who hear your word and come accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father. Help us today, Heavenly Father. All those who hear your word today, Heavenly Father, let them have ears to hear what your word has to say to us this morning, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for every blessing of this day. It's in Jesus' holy, 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 precious name that we give all the praise and glory to. Amen.
Lord, it's the Easter season. And in the Easter season, we remember what Christ done for us. And know what no one else can do for us. So, think about Jesus in Jesus' name and the power that his name holds. And let's all be glorious and happy about that. He 
gave up his life. God in the flesh. God in the flesh. Loved us so much. Oh, he loved us so much. Oh, he loved us so much. That he rose on the third day. See, my God ain't dead. No, my God ain't dead. My Jesus lives. My Jesus lives. It wasn't Muhammad. No, it wasn't Buddha. Oh, no, it ain't Confucius. Just the name of my Lord. Call on his name. The name of Jesus. Call on his name. The name of Jesus. It holds our life in power. It holds our healing power. It holds our healing power. The only name that can save. The only God that still lives. The one and only living God. Oh. Because there is no other name I have two hands, put them together, and give God some praise. I said, if you got two hands, put them together and give God praise. If you can attest to the male chorus, Sister Delma, that there's no other name like the name of Jesus. No other name. There's no power in James' name. There's no power in your name, but there's power in the name of Jesus. And there's no other name that I know that demons tremble at that name, that sicknesses get well at that name. No other name. No other name. Well, we bless the name of the Lord. It seems like some people came to church to have church. so grateful to the Lord for allowing us to be in church one more time. He did not have to do it, but he did. Coach Lay, he woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And it's one thing to wake up, but it's another thing to be able to get up. And so we're grateful to the Lord for the blessings in our lives. I stand to greet each and every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ, and beside him there is no other. To our online audience, we thank you so much for tuning in and worshiping with us. You could have selected any church online, but you chose to stop by St. James. But I got news for you, something good is going to happen to you today. Something good is going to happen today. I, I changed my declaration this week. I used to say I'm next in line for a miracle. And if you believe that, you can consent, con continue to say you're next in line for a miracle. But some of y'all can say y'all next. I'm saying I'm now. Yeah. 
I'm now, I'm overdue for a miracle in my life. And so I came to church just in case this is my day. I want to be ready for what God is going to give me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? When we used to race, we used to say, on your mark, get set, get ready, and go. Well, Lord, I'm ready for you to come my way. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. There's some things I've been praying about for a long time. And, Lord, I am counting on you to bring me through. Is that anybody else's testimony in the house? I'm counting on the Lord to bring me through. It's so good to see you. I can tell God has been good to you because every day this week he woke you up. And so you have survived 100% of the stuff you've been through because you're here to tell. I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone, but the Lord let me live on. So we came to church to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And if I were you, I would act like today is my day. And if you, would, if you really believe today is your day, how are you really going to act? How are you really going to act? If you believe today is the day God going to come your way, how really will you act? If God was coming through with blessings with your name on it, how would you act knowing that God has a blessing with your name on it? Bless his name, bless his name. While on others thou art calling, Lord, please don't pass me by. Good morning, church. Let me hear you say amen. I said, let me hear you say amen again. This is one of them old songs. We reach way back. Y'all pray for me. My voice ain't what it used to be, but that's what I got this morning. Your mother used to sing this. My mother. Y'all don't get me in. I don't want to get happy. A healing, 
a healing stream. Let me tell you where it flows. Flow from care is mountain. Oh. time. Feel free to join us at the altar or you may stand where you are. God has certainly been good to all of us. Otherwise, we couldn't even be here today. Everything may not be the way we think it ought to be in our lives, but he's still blessing us. thank you we praise you we bless your holy and righteous name we bow before your presence because in the first place you've invited us to because you said every knee must bow and every tongue confess 
He said the man ought to always pray and not faint. So here we are calling on your name this morning. Thanking you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thanking you for life, health, and strength. Thanking you that things are as well with us as they are. Thank you for another day of new mercies. For we've exhausted the ones of the previous day. So we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your peace. And we thank you for your power this morning. Father, we realize that it's not because of anything that we've done that you love us and bless us so much. But for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, as we bow, we have to confess that we have sinned against you. Sometimes we've thoughtlessly done it. And then there are times where we willfully did. But either way, we ask for your forgiveness. We pray that you will cleanse us of our unrighteousness. We pray, Father, that you would restore us to a right relationship with you. Oh, God, because we realize that had it not been for you, who was on our side and is on our side, we just couldn't make it. Father, as we bow, there are those among us who have certain physical ailments. Some have received recent diagnoses of illnesses. But Father, we call on you this morning because we realize, Father, that you can heal any manner of disease. You're able to do what doctors can't do. And Father, we pray that you will give us the faith to believe that you'll do what needs to be done in our lives. Oh God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit this morning. We thank you for his presence in this building and in our hearts. We pray, Father, that you continue to lead us and guide us in this worship experience. Because, Lord, we don't know. This may be our last time. We want to give you all the praise and the glory because you are so worthy. And now, Father, as we prepare to hear a word, bless us, Father, that we'll be receptive of that word. Bless us, Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit. We would adhere to your word and then do what you would have us to do. Bless us, Father, that we'll be what you would have us to be. Bless us to walk right. Bless us to talk right. Bless us to live right. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory. Bless us, O oh God, that we not become too complacent in our walk. Bless us, Father, that we will share your love with those around us. Bless us, Father, that we will be something that someone else needs in a time of trouble. Bless us to meet those needs. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory for you alone are worthy. Bless us as we go forward. Bless our pastor this morning as he stands to declare your truth. Bless us, Father, to receive 
your word in the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first I'm singing, singing, oh, how I love, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, Thank you, Miss Mary, and thank you to the male chorus for blessing our heart and song. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for meeting us in this place. As we are preparing for the word of God, why don't you go across the church and fellowship one with another? Tell someone something good. Don't spread nothing negative. And if you owe somebody some money, shake their hand with a green handshake and pay them back. But let's be happy. It's fellowship time here at St. James. Spread love, spread happiness. Give someone a prayer.
nobody like you, Lord. Oh, oh, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Woo. Nobody like you, Lord. Bless his name. If you know that it's... Even if you don't know it, you can sing that part. That there's nobody. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. It doesn't even matter what key you sing it in. Just say it. Just so you will know that those who are singing loudest really do know that there's nobody like the Lord. That's hard surgery, singing nobody like the Lord and Miss Mary. There's cancer being treated at MD Anderson, singing nobody like the Lord. Now, if a cancer patient and a heart patient can say there's nobody like the Lord. God brought you through some things too. And your testimony also is that there's nobody quite like the Lord. Switch and say, you are my healer, Lord. You are my healer, Lord. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You are my healer, Lord. You are my healer, Lord. That's Woo! it. You are my healer. If you need a healing, sing that. He is still in the healing business. church folk make up verses. Oh, 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 you made a way, Lord. You made a way, Lord. You made a way, Lord. 
Did he make a way for somebody in here? Did he make a way for somebody online? You made a way, Lord. I won't preach long, but Lord, you brought me out, Lord. I was in some horrible stuff. You brought me out. But he brought me out. Nobody else could do it but him. As we conclude this song, just give God a wave offering. Just give him a wave offering. And tell him something good about himself. Tell him something good about himself. Everyone in here has a testimony, and it's a different testimony. God, I thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Give you the glory, Lord. God, I thank you for not letting my plane fall out the sky this week. All the glory. Thank you for keeping me from car accidents and incidents. And even if the car accident happened, you still kept me. Bless his name. Father God, we thank and bless you for this time of preaching. We pray that you will speak to us and speak through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We have a, another hump to jump on today. I got to preach an afternoon service, so I'll try not to be too long. But I didn't preach last week, so I need to catch up. If you have your Bible, will you come with me to two different passages of Scripture this morning? And this, this scripture will tie in to each other as we move forward. And this will probably be one of the strangest sermons you ever heard. But the Bible says it has confounded them by the foolishness of preaching. And so if you have your Bibles, will you stand in reverence to the word of God and meet me in two different passages? The first will be in Hebrew. 914 and keep your Bible ribbon there and flip over to Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and just a moment of pastoral privilege thank you all so much for last week as we celebrated Lady Bolton and myself our second year here thank you for all the kindness and love you showed our, us and our families who were here from out of town, the cards, the cash, the kind words, we really appreciate it all. And for those of you who couldn't give us anything tangible, you gave us your love, and we appreciate that. So thank you all so much. It was so good on last week. Can we do it again next week? <laughs> Are you there in the word of God? Uh, first passage of scripture and it just be one verse as we continue in our series in this month on the cross the cross um, a, a, a pretty interesting subject on today let's go to Hebrews first 
And I'll be reading, of course, from the New King James Version of the Bible, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And if you are there, it should read something like this. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, what cleanse your consciousness from dead works to serve the living God. And then go over to Revelation chapter 12. And some people put an S on there. It's not revelations. It's only one revelation. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And if you are there, it should read something like this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. You may be seated in the presence of God. Pray with me as we preach this third part of the sermon series on the cross. And for the time that we share, I want to lift this subject. The concocknil insect. Yep. The concocknil insect. And please pray with me. The Concocno insect and ushers, you may be seated when you're ready. Dear hearts, 97% of insects live on the land. 97% of them live on the land. But there are a few that live on or in trees. The cross was made from a tree. And a tree is what this certain insect lives on. Not only does it live on the tree, it also lives off the tree. The concocknil insect, dear hearts, can't survive without the tree. It is the tree that saves the life of this insect. If it were not for the tree, there would be no cococknil insect. And if it wasn't for another tree, there will be no you or me. A few years ago, a flash flood hit the eastern shores. It came so fast, it caught folks off guard. And as the rescue teams were out, they noticed a man who was caught in the flood but wasn't going under. When they got to the man, they realized that this man was latched on to the branch of a tree. They rescued that man, and the news media wanted to interview him. He said that I was actually going down, but I was able to reach out and hold on to the branch of a tree. And if it was not for that tree, there would be no me. The man was saved by a tree. And guess what? You too. And me too. For on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross 
And because that cross stood then, we can stand now. So in the storms of your life, had Jesus not handled his business on a tree, you would not be here. For this insect lives because of a tree, but that's not the only thing about this insect I need to share. This insect has something in its body that is produced by it being on the tree that has value to it. This insect is only 0.2 inches in diameter. And so nobody would really notice it if they saw it until they noticed what came out of it. So it's not how this bug or this insect looks. It's more on what's on the inside. Did you hear me? That's why you can't really judge people just by how they look. The real person is on the inside. For what's on the inside of this bug has made it rival gold and silver. When it was discovered what was on the inside, of this cock canal bug, yeah. they realized how value it was, right. how valuable it was to mankind when this particular thing was discovered. Right. What was discovered has funded empires, yeah. was used in religious garments, and has been implemented in the masterpieces of the best paintings in the world. It became so popular that its notoriety spread across the entire globe because everybody wanted some of it, but some people felt they couldn't live without it. An entire age in history was based on how this hue changed the lives of people. The world's best scientists could not figure out how this compound was produced or the pathway that made it look like it looked. Did you hear me? The world's best scientists could not figure out the compound, how it was produced, or the pathway it took to get to where it was. And the same with you. Folks can't figure out how all the hell you've been through, you still got a smile on your face. They can't figure out how all the storms of life have hit you, not just once, but continue to hit you, but you still come to church and bless God. They can't understand how you can smile at folks who lie on you, how you can be kind to folks who talk about you. Baby, there's something on the inside that's working on the outside and show made a change in my life. This compound has been found in foods. This compound has been found in clothes. And if you got some lipstick on, this compound is even found in that lipstick. To get it, people were praised. To have it cost a high price. And to wear it meant you were powerful. The carcachnil insect naturally produced a compound or a dye that was red. Don't you hang up on the on me. Don't, don't hang up yet. This small insect produced naturally a red color that no other insect 
or an animal could naturally produce. It was in this bug. And so it was with Calvary. There was a red crown. There was a red cross. There was a red Christ. Why? Because out of his body came a red compound that saved humanity. The Bible says to look at Jesus wasn't an attractive sight, but when they saw that red compound come out of him, that was value, that was to be praised, it cost a high price, and there was power in it. You all missed that. Just like this insect, what was in it was praise. What was in it cost a high price. And if you could afford it, you were powerful. Well, the blood of Jesus is the same thing. We praise God for the blood. It cost Jesus a high price. And when you got it, baby, you got some power. For there's power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Lest I hold you too long. That's the story. Now here's the study. Bolton, why did you go to San Francisco, uh, San Diego? You got too high in that airplane and your brains got messed up. Would you be preaching about a bug? I'm glad you asked. Because there's three things about this bug that we see on Calvary. The first thing we see is, number one, this bug produced a red compound that was needed to move stuff away that didn't belong. So number one, the blood of Jesus cleanses. Did you hear me? The blood results in cleaning. First John 1 John 1.7 says it this way. The blood of Jesus, God's son, cleans all of our sins. There ain't a sin you can commit that the blood can't clean. Did you hear me? Every sin you even thought of, we got blood for that. So what we see here is this. We got water to clean our skin. But we got Jesus' blood to clean our sin. So the book says that he cleans us from everything wrong that we done. So whenever you sin, God don't see your sin because of the blood he sees his son. So Jesus just is not an intercessor. He's also an interceptor. He intercedes on your behalf for the father when you do wrong. That's intercessor, but he's also an interceptor. The stuff that tries to get to you that don't need to get to you, he intercepts it so it can't hit you. The word blood, is anybody keeping me company this morning? The word blood is mentioned 447 times in scripture in 357 verses. Theologian says that the book of Hebrews, which we just read out of, is the bloodiest book in the New Testament. But blood is our password to purity. Did you hear me? Because the book says, without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission for your sin. So Jesus paid a debt he did not owe to cancel a debt we could not pay. Because bullocks and doves and pigeons used to be the sacrifice for blood that we needed on what the book calls the Day of Atonement. Break that word down, at one meant. 
So sin required a blood payment. But you still here. You missed that. Sin required a blood payment, but you still alive. The book says, for all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I don't see nobody bleeding in here this morning because Robert Lowry says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Robert Lowry was writing by himself. And he didn't wait for nobody to answer. He asked two questions and answered himself. I got news for you. It's okay to talk to yourself. Sometimes you need to even answer yourself back. What can wash away my sin? Answer, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Answer, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And if you think about the blood long enough, the blood will make you happy just like it did him because Robert Lowry says, oh, precious is that flow that can make me white as snow. No other found I know nothing but the blood of, of Jesus. So not only do we see, number one, that the blood results in cleaning. But number two, we see, see that the blood reacts by conquering. Did you hear me? It results in cleaning. But the blood reacts by conquering. The compound that the cochineal insect lets out is called carminic acid. This carminic acid is red. And this carminic acid is used by the insect to deter predators and to keep it protected. This red substance keeps enemies away from it and also keeps it protected. Uh, 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 when, 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 when the World Trade Center situation happened there was a a, a, a a businessman who was driving to work and he had a white shirt on and he was driving to work and while he was driving to work he had a nosebleed looked down nearly got to the World Trade Center that day looked down and saw he was covered in blood so he had to turn around and go back to where he came from. If he was never covered in blood, he would have perished in those towers. And it's the same thing with you and me, with all the hell and high water that we got coming our way. With the devil being on a rampant like he is, baby, get covered in the blood because the blood keeps the devil at bay. And so our enemy, our ultimate enemy, who is the devil, the Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, that we can overcome him by the word of our testimony and by the what? Blood of the lamb. So if you need protection from the enemy, get under the blood. If you need a hiding place, get under the blood. If you need forgiveness for your sins, get under the blood because there is a fountain. Get happy with me for 10 more seconds. Filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's vein, where sinners can plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty, their guilty stain. So I got to finish up. I got to preach in about another hour, okay? So number one, this, 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 this cochineal insect, 
It, 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 the blood, the, the, the red, the, the blood from it releases, re, 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 releases, re, releases this blood results. But third and finally, this cockatiel bug. The red stuff can't be released until the bug is crushed. The last thing about this insect is the only way that the red compound is released yeah. is when the insect is crushed. Uh -huh. Nothing comes out uh -huh. Come until the insect is crushed. Yeah. Nothing is released yeah. until there's some pressure that's applied to the bug. Some, some, some stress, some crushing, some pressure got to be applied to the bug for the good stuff to come out. Crushing, pressure, Brings out the best in it. Crushing. Pressure. Gets the value out. And you sitting up there complaining. About pressures in your life. Baby you ain't been who you gonna be. Until you have been crushed. You cannot have a testimony until you've been tested. And so many people complain about the crushing. Don't complain about the crushing. Thank God for the crushing. Because you didn't know how much faith you had until you went through some crushing situations. And so it was with Jesus. He was crushed and killed in order for blood to come out. And would Jesus bear the cross alone? Would Jesus bear the crushing alone? Would Jesus bear the brutality alone. Would Jesus bear Calvary alone? Would Jesus bear the Via Della Rosa alone? Would Jesus bear our sin alone? And all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Let me tell you something, dear hearts. Sometimes you are crushed, and when you are crushed, that flattens you to the bottom. But there are some things that you will learn on the bottom that you will never see on the top. So thank God for the crushing. Because some things... We didn't even know we could have the strength to make it through. We made it through. Not because of cribs, cars, and creaturely comforts. We know we got it now because of the crushing. So when you are crushed, don't complain. Be like the old song says, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and I've had 
some lonely nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. So I I got to preach again. My time is up. I appreciate yours. The church is open. We must do it, and when we must do it, it ain't no time like now. If you're out of the ark and the saint of Christ, the time now is to come and rededicate your soul because that's what's gonna go back to heaven your soul. Not your body, but your soul. So if you want your soul to be cleansed, you got to accept the blood. That's the only way we can get clean, my brothers and sisters. In the, blood the blood has been shed. Of I know that he Come. It doesn't matter what we have done. He will forgive there you. Is he. But you got to trust him. You got to believe him. Oh, that he is a forgiving God. You ought to come. Oh, if life have crushed you, oh, you ought to come to Jesus. Jesus. And he can lift you from what is crushing you in your life. I'm talking about hope. Is there one? Oh, oh, you ought to come. He said he'll wash you as white as snow. Do you believe it? Of Jesus. If you believe it, oh, the blood then you must trust him. And if you don't Jesus. believe him, you ought to come to him and let him wash you. Oh, because he said in his words, we all are nothing but filthy rags in his eyesight. So we all need cleansing at some point in our lives. So the time is now. The opportunity is now. You want to be washed from all your sins? See, there's none. And if the Lord wish to call you home today, you're saying, you don't have a shadow of doubt in your mind where you must be in eternity. We will give you back to the hand of our pastor. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. If you come back in two weeks, we'll complete this series on why that cochineal 
NSEC was so important. On Easter Sunday, we're going to conclude this series talking about that tree. We thank God for your presence on this afternoon. It is so good to see each and every one of you, and we cannot complete worship without the opportunity to give unto the Lord the glory, the Bible says, that's due to his name. The best way, tangibly, you show someone appreciation is through financial means, tangibly, tangibly. And so it is offering time here at St. James. Let us, <laughs> there, was, there were two amens on that. <laughs> the Bible said the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So I'll tr rewind and press play. play. It's offering time here at St. James. Amen. We thank God for resources to give back to our source. Amen. We are so grateful that God will bless us with goods and resources and services. And we just want, listen, you cannot pay God, but you can obey God. And so this is just our obedience. Tell the Lord, thank you for what you've given us. Uh, ushers are coming now. Forever and ever. church that wants everyone to be blessed. Is there someone here who had a desire to give but just did not have it? Is there anyone in the house that had a desire to give that just but you you just didn't have it? And you're not embarrassed to let us know. And we're not doing this to point you out. We just want you to be blessed. Because if there was someone, someone in this church will put something in your hand to give. 
because it is more blessing to give than it is to receive. We see a, we have a house full of blessed folks. Thank God for that. Brother Ira is going to lead us out in prayer. Amen. Thank you so much. We're grateful to God, and we'll go, we're going home in a few minutes. But before we leave, are there any visitors who would like to either stand or raise your hand and be recognized? Any visitors who would like to stand or raise your hand and be recognized? Amen. That is Coach Lay and his lovely wife, Delma, that are here visiting. They said that they would come, and they are people of their word. Will you all give them a great God bless you for being here? Thank you so much for coming. We trust that something was said in the service that either touched you or was a blessing to you. And if it wasn't, come back in two, well, I would say two weeks, but we're going to be here next week. <laughs> we just have our women's program, and it, that'll be a blessing to you also. But if not, give us another chance. Thank you so much. Your presence here has made our worship service all the more worthwhile. Thank you for being here. And nothing against next Sunday, it's just that I was saying that I'll be preaching the last of this on Easter Sunday. But whatever God says on next week, God's word never return unto him void. God's word would never return unto him void. Would there anyone else, any other visitors? <clears throat> All right, let's stand. This afternoon, we have quite a bit going on in our community quite a bit going on in our community from here all the way to Big Spring. To all of you who had birthdays or who are having birthdays in the month of March, in the month of March, God bless you and happy birthday to you. Whenever you cut the cake, bring me a piece. Bring me a piece. We are celebrating today in Big Spring, Mount Bethel's 100th church anniversary. So thank God for that church and that ministry. Some of you all will be going over there. If you're not going over there, will you hang out with Sister Bolton and myself at St. Matthew this afternoon at 3? We'll be over there um, celebrating with them their 64th year church anniversary. And I won't preach a long sermon, but I'll try to preach a strong sermon. So it will be great to have you in the place. If you cannot make it, if you can't send anything else, please send your prayers. Will you lift your hands to receive the benediction? Blessed be the name. Father, we thank and bless you for your people who are here in this sanctuary and worshiping with us online. We pray, God, that they will have a blessed week, a great week, a prosperous week, a week where the blood of Jesus keeps them covered so the enemy can't bother them. We pray, God, for nothing but good news and prosperity in the coming days. We love you and we appreciate you. One last thing, Father, will you embarrass the devil on our behalf? this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Go in peace. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming to worship.